I think this card is broken in multiple ways. I'm going to show you just one way in which it's broken, but I think this is just the tip of the iceberg, and I still do think this card will get banned, and pretty fast. Let me show you how it works. Okay, so today we are testing with Turbo Necro Dominance. We're going to try to find out if this card is truly broken and maybe needs a banning. Uh, there's a couple things I want to mention before we really get started here. First off, this isn't like the perfect list or anything. There are some tensions when you run eight protection spells. The main thing that's happening here is... You have cards that allow you to resolve Necro, Necro, you have cards that protect your attempt to resolve Necro, and then you have cards that prevent you from fizzling post-Necro, right? And the tension is that, obviously, protection doesn't help for the combo at all, other than making sure you actually get it through. The more protection you play, the worse your deck is in executing the combo. You can get past 85% turn one winning with mulligans if you don't play protection <laughs> goes down to just over 70 if you do play protection and you're getting very close to or just about 30 percent turn one protected with eight protection spells while still staying at a 70 percent win rate on turn one if you wanted to go with four packed negation you wind up close to an 80 percent turn one win rate with closer to a 10 percent protected so the 30% protected by playing 8, really worth it, in my opinion, especially with how much interaction there is. Mostly forceful, of course, but you're not always going to win the die roll. There's days, depending on how things move forward, there might be stifles, spell pierces, who knows, right? Veil of Summer, Act is really important. Chancellor can also do the same thing. So there's a little bit of my own uh, testing, but... As you play this many, right, you have to take cards out, because you can't really afford to go down on Born and Valakut. These are the cards that allow you to not fizzle post-Necro. So you don't want to do all this work and then just lose to yourself anyways. So you can't... Re those are kind of untouchable, as far as sideboarding goes. Chromox is probably the worst of the mana, but there's tension there because you need Bargain. Wild Cantor isn't always great, but... There's a lot of times where, especially with Summoner's Pact, you just need it to be able to make black so that you can cast your black rituals, so that you can get a triple black for Beseech and Necro. And the sideboard is tough to flush out. We have cards that, when we don't need as much protection, we can actually just increase our turn one win rate. We have protection that will be better on the draw. Chancellor isn't good on the draw, and we still want protection. One of the downsides of running Chancellor is that you need to devote more slots to protection, even still. And then I think on the play, you can't even run 10. So it is a bit awkward, but there's a lot of sideboard space that we just don't necessarily even know what to do with. And of course, you have Foundation Breaker that you can find with Pact, and Nature's Claims so that you can get rid of stuff like Leyline of Sanctity. I do quickly want to talk about the people who actually created this deck. I've been a part of it, but pretty small part. So you have the creator, these are Discord users, Hataraxi. And then you have Martin Medmitten and RBVH, who created simulators through writing code and algorithms to test win rates and card choices. So with these simulators, you can simulate thousands of games, resulting in more accurate, to an extent, simulations are not always perfect, human error, etc. But they're damn close. And instead of jamming 10, 20 matches, which are relatively small sample sizes that can change, over the course of a thousand matches, doing things like, well, what if we play four of this instead? What if you only play two? What's the win rates? And then probably the next most enthusiastic people, myself and Jax, who, correct me if I'm wrong, Jax, but mostly along for the ride, <laughs> but we helped observed and discussed about numbers and theory and 
try to emphasize how it would actually play out in matches. Easiest example is both Jax and I are pretty adamant about uh, you either play a protection or the deck's probably not worth playing, whereas the creator is insisting on four because of whatever percentage that you're not going to get interacted with. I think it's just unrealistic. Uh, and there are many others who helped along the way, all right? I, I'm not going to list everyone, obviously. It's not even that big of a deal, right? Like, I, Or it might be, I don't know. We'll, we'll, time will tell. Um, also, just because I listed what they quote-unquote did for the deck, it doesn't mean that's the only thing they did. I really don't intend for this to be some sort of official document for credit, and even just writing this, I feel like, blows it out of proportion, but mostly I just wanted to show people uh, that this isn't just, like, my creation. All right? Okay, so, how does it work? Put Necro into play. That's the shortest way to say it, and then you win the game. <laughs> how do we do that? Black Rituals, or we use Beseech, which takes a little more resources, but you only have four Necros. Once it's in play, you go to your end step, you pay 19, and you draw 19. You use that 19, you use up Spirit Guides, Act to get Spirit Guides, so you effectively have 12 Spirit Guides. It's a Morphos, so that you can get Black Mana for Dark Ritual, or at least just Blue Mana for Born, so that you can cast Born, Born Upon a Wind. It allows you to play everything at instant speed. Then you can play out petals and chrome oxen and actually kill them with tendrils. There is a reasonable fizzle rate. If and this is why you see leyline of anticipation in a lot of people's lists, because they correctly analyze that born upon a wind, even if you have four, there's some number of the time you're just not gonna draw it. This is the genius solution. Valicate Awakening, which not only is it a tap land that can become relevant at more grindy times. When I say grindy, I mean you go, they stop you, maybe your opponent mold a five and forced so that now they're not doing much and now you're both going back and forth. Land drops can be nice. Um, but what this card does is allows you to put any number of cards from your hand on the bottom of your library, then draw that many cards plus one. So if you don't hit Born, as long as you have enough spirit guides to get you to Valkyrie Awakening, you can just redraw almost, you know, usually you keep like a Beseech or Tendrils, whatever. Maybe you uh another valicut whatever it is and then you just put like 16 17 cards back on the bottom and draw 16 or 17 fizzle rate is like way below five percent like this you play four valicut it's like about 99 percent which is insane still not as good as oops as far as execution oops is 100 <laughs> percent but we don't touch the graveyard which is a huge plus obviously don't have to worry about Leyline of the Void or various graveyard interaction for the most part. So as far as protection selections, and this is why I'm on Chancellor in Pact, the other options are Vexing Bauble, Duress, and Veil of Summer. I had basically concluded at some point that it was Chancellor. It was between Chancellor and Duress. I tested Duress on stream today. I didn't like it. I think Veil has a place because of Bauble, but Bauble felt awful. I tested that on the early access day. I pretty quickly tossed it. It just it doesn't feel good for us to have it in play. Mostly for the same reason that I don't think Veil vale or Duress are better than Chancellor, which is it costs mana, right? The reason why Pact is so good, it, it costs one card and it costs zero mana. Chancellor costs one card and it costs zero mana. Both Veil vale of Summer and Duress and Bobble, yes, they're one card, unlike something like Grief or Force of Will, but they cost one mana. Veil and Duress, a specific color, so Bobble has that going for it. But as you start to mulligan, it becomes increasingly... The chance of utilizing a protection spell that actually costs a mana gets lower and lower. So it really makes your mulligans worse and worse. For the same reason, you don't really see Mox Opal. I have one for if we're looking to go as fast as possible, but the card is very inconsistent and incredibly so as you start mulliganing down to lower numbers on top of that for chancellor you can imprint it with your chrome mox not for nothing i even had a game where and i punted i had it one but i i punted for some reason i uh what did i scoop to i forget but oh right we had necrodom in play so they couldn't mill us it was against painter and they milled us and i scooped and i was like in chat went nuts 
Well, they didn't go nuts, but somebody pointed out, like, uh, what? Because <laughs> you skip your draw step. Uh, but I, I hard casted a Chancellor. We went, they stopped us, or I forget exactly what grindy situation occurred, but... Or no, we fizzled. That's what it was. We fizzled, and then I tendrils them the next turn, or like 12 or whatever, so I didn't die. And then we took some draw steps, and then I put a Chancellor into play. <laughs> it was a ridiculous game. And I would have won it if I wasn't a dummy. But, uh, yeah. That's, that's the deck. That's why I've chosen these cards. Am I 100% on everything about the list you see in front of you right now? No. But, let's jam some games. Let's see if we can break the format. See you in the first round. Alright, here we are in round one on the draw against DM2022 here. And we have... No bargain for Beseech. You'd hope to draw a bargain, but it seems pretty dicey. This one's slower, but it's got double packed. I'm actually going to keep it. I'm going to keep the double packed. Being born on the bottom doesn't feel great. Getting Blood Mooned. Okay. Could be worse. We have four cards. Play Vault of Whispers. So we're really looking for like Morphos, Petal, Dark Rit. Plus Morphos. Two turns away here. And I hope they don't have a threat. Oh, that's a threat. Right, we're in trouble. We are in big trouble. Could play a 2-2, but it doesn't do much because it can't block Broadside Bombardiers. We're down a 16. That card doesn't matter. Okay. It's so close. Problem is, if we miss, like, we have to hit at all. Dark Rit or Cabal Rit. It's 12 hits. I wonder if they throw Hearse at us next turn. They didn't do it this turn, so maybe not. Probably not. They probably think it's important. I'm gonna go. go black. Black. Valakut. Um. That is an interesting draw. Get Valakut two packs away. I guess I leave up. Two petals could do it too. Leave up red for Morphos. In case we draw Metamorphos. Really, we just want Dark Ritual. Or two Cabal Rituals, or Cabal Ritual plus any other mana. Or two Petals. Alright, the opponent crashed. They're back. Let's go, baby, let's go! Yeah! We have less life to work with. Don't really think Beseech matters. What if we... I don't want to draw any more Beseeches, so I guess I Beseech for Beseech. Then Necro? So I guess it does matter. That's fine. I was gonna say, it could be relevant for Cabal Ritual, but they're not gonna let that happen. Siege again. We'll get Necrodom. See if we can make it happen with 15 cards. Alright, 15, let's go! I see lots of Spirit Guides. I see a Morphos and a Valakut. One Elvish, two Elvish. Let's cast one of these. There's the three Born Upon the Winds. Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide. Morphos. We go Black, Red, Dark Red, Cabal Red. I think we Valakut from here. Keep the Beseech. Get rid of Necro, Cabal, Pact, Chancellor, Petal, Chancellor, Cantor, Pact, Maul. Keep the Red Spirit Guide. Get rid of Petal. Come on, baby. There's Born Upon a Wind. Spirit Guide. I think we got there. Summoner's Pact. I think we have... Oh, we don't have one more. That's a bummer. Morphos. Hmm. Need the blue. Oh, right. Born Upon a Wind gives us pedal. Okay, we're good. We're good. Doesn't really matter. Born Upon a Wind. Pedal. Tendrils. Oh my god, that was close. That was a crazy game. Crazy game. Okay, so... Veil doesn't really help against them. We need Nature's Claims. Foundation Breaker. Back doesn't help. Chancellor could be worth it. They have a lot of ways to just break it. But is it better to is it better to just play the Chrome Mox in an Opal and Valakut? Maybe. Like Chancellor, it can mess up their turn one, right? Like they can have a Trinosphere, but not because there's a Chancellor. I'm gonna I mean there's a ton of situations where Chancellor's just not good enough. It might not be correct, but this is what I'm gonna go for. I'll take him out on the play. I'll probably just play the Nature's Claims Foundation Breaker, and then bring up some, bring in some of the faster stuff. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay, this is what I'm talking about. If a Chancellor screw with their 
turn. And then we have a turn one necro. Now, of course, of course, of course, of course, you could just have an extra chrome mox in or whatever and just brush this chancel right off. They kept on seven, so that's not good. So bottom beseech. But let's hope it screws with them. Land pass. Dallas on zero to break the Chancellor. Land pass. City. Chromox. Hey, for to throw it out. Throws it out. Yeah, just had an extra Chromox. All right. Okay. Blood Moon were two turns away from just shrugging off. That's funny. All right. Got them dead next turn if they don't have like a Trinisphere or something. They don't. They're going to hit us for one. Not irrelevant, but not too effective. They have one card. All right. We go land. Morphos, black, um, I guess I go green. Valakid's not a bad draw. Dark Rit Necro, not a bad draw at all. And we go for 18 cards. All right. Plenty of green spirit guides in the deck. Reborn upon a wins. But we have the Valakut. You want to use these because I don't want to draw into them. Gives you a higher chance of hitting Born Upon the Wind. I don't necessarily want to use the spirit guide. Because if I shuffle it into the deck with the Valakut, then I can still use um, more green packs. All right, we're going to Morphos, Black, Blue, Dark Rit, and another Valakit is pretty good. No more Dark Rits. I'll use one of these Cabal Rits. Use a red. Cast the Valakut. So we're going to keep Wincon. We're going to keep Red Spirit Guides. And we're going to keep this other Valakit. Everything else must go. Get out of here. Go on, scram. There's Born Upon a Wind. Plenty of other stuff to win. Nice, 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 nice. Bargain this Necrodom away. And get him with the Tendies. Pretty sweet match. Well, we're 1 0, see you in round two. All right, here we are, round two. We are on the draw again against Huge Tunes. And we'll keep this. This is a turn one Necro and some. One, two, four, six. It's almost threatening double Necro. All right, they go Saga. Boots. Sweet. Not so bad. Wow. Um, one, two, three, five, seven. Yeah, we have double Necro. Crazy. I think they're F6 anyways, but... Um, I'm going to use an extra... I know they're F6, but just in case. Let's me keep this red up. They almost have just lethal. Five, six, hitting Chromox, seven, hitting Necro. <laughs> if you had guys well, then it would be lethal easy. Um, even Beseech to put something in our hand. If you go Ritual, Beseech. I think I'd rather just have this Chromox up, though. And have cards in my hand for Valakut. Draw 19. Oh, yeah, we got Spirit Guides. Lots of Spirit Guides. Morphos, Born Upon a Wind, we are in. Black and Blue, Dark Rit, Cabal Rit, Mana, Ball Rit, Dark Rit, Cabal Rit. I thought I cast the Born Upon a Wind. And we will bargain, baby. Well, that's what I call a bargain. I guess one problem is we don't know what we're playing against. Could be Black Saga Storm, could be some sort of... Blue base saga deck. Hmm. Either way, I think Veil is pretty good. Chancellor can come out here. I think I want the Pact. The Foundation Breaker in case there's Chalice involved. And there's probably Bobbles somewhere. Which is why Veil's pretty decent too. And I'll just play a Chromox. We could play a Nature's Claim. If I knew it was Black Saga Storm, I'd play Leyline of Sanctity. That's probably what it is. But I don't feel like we can assume that. Can we just turn zero Spirit Guide Veil a Thought Seize, please? Is that too much to ask for when it's already pretty unlikely and we're only playing two Veil? Is that too much to ask? Okay, this hand doesn't make a Necro. This hand makes a Necro, it's protected, and it has a Foundation Breaker. Not exactly a castable one, but, you know. Do I keep backup Necrodom? I don't think so. Prismatic Vista, okay. Okay, everyone was wrong. Nobody would have guessed it. <laughs> uh, I'm glad I didn't bring in Leyline of Sanctity. Saga, Boots, Ponder off Island, Prismatic Vista. 
I almost want to see Breakfast, but they wouldn't play Vista. I mean, I'd also say if I saw Saga that the person isn't playing Vista, and here they are. I, I don't know what's going on. Your guide's not a bad draw at all. Here we go. And we're off. Days, huh? Sure. I will pay. All you got? <laughs> well, wishing I had the balls to use Pact instead. Draw 19. Spirit Guide, Spirit Guide. We have more foes, Born Upon a Wind. Yeah. Might not get something, yeah. Alright, more foes. Black. I have more Spirit Guides, right? Yep. Blue. Dark Rit. Dark Rit. Although it doesn't matter if you have Spirit Guides because you just Born Upon a Wind, then you can use Petals. Yes, some more spells. Storms 10. Alright. There's Tendrils in hand? No. That's attendees. It's a turn run through a force and days. They didn't have force, but we had it covered. Dead, 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 dead. All right, we are 2 0 undefeated in round three. All right, round three against X Grave. We're on the play this time. This hand doesn't do anything. Now we're on six, and this hand also doesn't do anything. It makes land drops and can trips, but. That's not going to cut it. They've gone down to six. We're going to go to five. Ooh, this one is not looking great. Go to four. All right. There's a turn one necro with a spirit guide to boot on four, which is very good. Um, obviously unprotected, but what can you do? Here comes the writ. Here comes the boom. Oh, it's in. It's in there. Look out. Look out, here comes 19. Here comes 19. Whoops. Gut shot me, I dare you. Alright, we have spirit guides. We have Morphos. We have Born Upon a Wind. Alright, we're good. Worried for a second, but we're good. Summoner's Pact. Morphos. Black and blue. Rit. 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 Born Upon a Wind. That all. Get you with the tendies. Okay. <laughs> All right, we are completely in the blind. Chancellor comes out. Bales come in. Breaker comes in. And I think I just want the chrome mox. Call it a day. Yeah. I mean, so far we are crushing. Been close a couple times. Hmm. If this hand finds a black source, it has a protected turn one. They mulligan to six. We can keep on seven, just let them mulligan into oblivion and play a slower game, but it's probably a bit too risky with this hand. One's considerably worse. They've kept on six. Um, this hand is also garbage. All right, we keep a black source. We keep necro packed and spirit guide. You can keep double packed, but I'd rather just have the spirit guide. The reason you might keep double packed is because bigger. By the time you find Necro, you're probably going to need two counters. It wouldn't be a bad play. I could see myself just going for it at a different point. But now we have the power level of just having a protected turn one on four. Christ, man. He's like, seriously? They're going to force it. We're going to force back and they're going to be like, are you serious? <laughs> you have another one? You do not. Holy crap. Return one through a force and a mulligan to four. Granted on the draw, but still. Well, let's see. There is a fizzle rate. Super shallow fizzle rate, but it exists. Okay, there's a spirit guide. We got Morphos. Plenty of spirit guides. And a Born Upon the Wind. Okay. Okay. Tendril's already in hand. This game is definitely over. More spirit guides. We're gonna Morphos. Black, blue, dark red. Make sure I did actually see Born Upon a Wind. Yep. Born Upon a Wind. Cast more spells. Why not? All right, we'll get you. We'll get you with the tendies. How's that, huh? You like that? Dead. Dead, 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 dead. All right, well, we haven't dropped a game. <laughs> we'll see you in round four. All right, round four against Trons. Run the play. Her hand is risky. You could Valakut, like, reasonably well, too. But 
not that well. You're better off mulliganing. All right, this is a protected turn one. We take those. Uh, obviously, we need these. We need the protection. Oh, boy. Tough choice, but to bottom. Valakid is, like, probably the best thing you could have. Or you could just bank the Born Upon a Wind already. Problem is, if you don't find Manamorphos, I think Valakid is just... Or maybe it's just the Spirit Guide. No, I like having the mana. I think Valakid is the best failsafe. All right. OP is also on six. They're going to have to have double force for this one. All right, make a black, dark red, necrodom. <laughs> Messed up things, they probably have a family too. Yeah, they, they fixed necropotence. They fixed it. P19. All right, we have Morphoses, plenty of spirit guides. He said, what? What with an exclamation and a question mark. Because we went for 19. They're like, no, you didn't. Obviously, they haven't seen this. <laughs> OP's like, wow. Bold choice, 19. Oh, yeah. Let's bank our blue mana. Bank it, baby. Like casting the Dark Ritz because they're super efficient. Uh, I'm going to keep the Spirit Guide anyways. So we're going to Valakit. We'll keep... Or do we have Tendrils? No. We'll keep the Beseech. We'll keep... Morphos. I think that's about it. Get rid of the green, one of the black. Opponent remains flabbergasted. <laughs> I would imagine. Uh, yeah, I think we can get rid of all of this. I'll keep the guide. Get rid of these, get rid of these, get rid of these, get rid of these, get rid of these. I'll put this spirit guide back. I don't really need green. There's Born Upon a Wind. Dark Rit. Cabal Rit. Romox. And get him with the tendies. OP's like, why am I playing this format? <laughs> yeah, it's just kind of how it is, OP. Sorry. All right. Once again, we don't know what our opponent is doing. <laughs> Luxury problems, I guess. Let's go. Veils, take the Chancellors out, play Foundation Breaker, and add a Chromox. Seems like a reasonable way to go for it on the draw game too when we don't know what they're on um this is a turn one it's unprotected but we don't know what they're doing so we'll keep all right they're doing blue stuff Art right on top hmm kind of makes me want to go for it honestly i don't really think things get better if we wait let's go come on op really really i guess they didn't learn their lesson <laughs> oh shit and 19 okay let's go get a spirit guide go get another spirit guide use up our spirit guides let's see we got morphos we got born upon a wind we got dark reds we're in there black blue red red born red do red to quit uh let's imprint a valica I'm gonna go Morphos, make green, green, cast the veil. We're just having some fun. That's all. A little tendies action. <laughs> oh boy. Okay, well, who wants some next? See you in the final round for the trophy match. All right, here we are in the final match against Damon X Wind. We're on the draw. We have a protected nothing. We're not protecting anything. So we mulligan. This one has definitely nothing. All right, down to five we go. This one has a, like, extra nothing? That's not good. All right, we go to four. This one doesn't have anything. <laughs> we go to three. Okay, we have land, writ, Almost Necro. Problem is it has no... I mean, besides the fact this is on three. It's got no, uh... What's it called? Bargain? I'm more inclined to keep packed and hope that we draw Necro. Or maybe it's just another... No. Maybe it is Beseech. Maybe we might draw another Beseech, too, but... Alright. What can you do on three, you know? Yeah, there's just no way this actually wins on a draw step, though. Unless we hit Necro. In which case, we don't need that. I guess it's actually just, it's either Petal or Pact. Petal doesn't really help too much either. 
Yeah, let's just hope to draw a Necro. Uh-oh. Might be the mirror. Maybe nothing matters. Still might be the mirror. Not the mirror. Alright, it's Boros. Looks like they don't have disruption. You can draw it now. We did not. We say we pass. Land drop does not help us. I'd rather not show anything. We take the hit. And we hope to draw it now. I guess if we had that pedal, then Beseech would be turned on here too. Right. I mean, I'm getting trapped. There's no way we're getting there, even if we draw Necro. It is for sure Boros. Alright, somewhat close. Alright, we hit our fizzle rate. We don't need these or these. We want all of our stuff that increases our rates here. Let's play Foundation Breaker and a Nature's Claim. Play the Valakut, play another Nature's Claim. Yep. A Trap is probably the only thing that's going to stop us here. Now our turn one win rate is just outrageously high. This configuration of cards. Alright, this is... We keep the Pact or the Writ. Go Writ, Writ, Beseech, Hitting Petal, or Writ. And then Pact gets a Spirit Guide. Do I want Dark Writ or Summoner's Pact? Morphos. Post Necro. I get Summoner's Pact. Alright, no, like, Ley Line of Sanctity. I don't think they really play that, but I'm glad they didn't have it. Writ. They are F6. They do like that. Very kind of them. Maybe I actually want the Dark Writ. Yeah, it's super rare that you don't hit Pacts. But Dark Writ is nice. Post Morphos. Oh, we could have left a Petal in play. That would have been best. So if we went Spirit Guide and land Morphos, bottom for one of the Dark Rituals. No, we, we, we needed... Never mind. We'd get an extra draw to see if we had a bargain, but we actually had to bargain that away. Never mind. All right, here comes the Necro. Comes the 19. Assuming we don't fizzle here, game three is going to be very tough. Okay. Born upon a wind. No Morphos. We do have Valakut. Okay. Right, that's a wild Cantor. Now we cast Valakut. We keep Siege the Mirror. Actually, I'm going to bottom. Well, no, I'll keep it. Keep a Siege. I'm going to keep Dark Writ. I'm going to keep Spirit Guide. And we keep Born upon a wind. Everything else can go. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, we found a Morphos. I think I have one more packed, right? Oh, this is close. This one was super close. Or one more spirit guide, rather. Black, blue, dark red, born upon a wind, Romox, metal, opal. Rit, Beseech, and Tandies. Okie dokie then. They did ruin our perfect record. Already. So that's a bummer. And this is tough. You play the other Nature's Claim, for sure. Do you play the Chancellors? The biggest problem is Archon, right? We don't actually have an answer for Archon. Maybe we should? I think I want Chancellors. Might be my only chance. <laughs> low chance we're dropping some of these low chance we're dropping some of these zeros anyways all right um yes please this is a turn one nature's claim plus necro and a summoner's pact um trinosphere is a problem archon is a problem they've mulliganed to four alice on one is a problem all right what do they got on four cavern on human at all alice on zero Love it. Right, we're going to have to remember that they have 20 life. Probably end step this in case of trap. Eh, we're not playing around trap anyways. We could if we draw black source. I guess there's no reason not to do this right now. At least I don't see one. Get it out. Wow, we did draw it. They're F6th, but let it be known, we did also play around trap. All right. End step. 19. So 1, 2, Elvish... Yeah, we have a pedal on board too. Spirit Guide. Spirit Guide. We have Born Upon a Wind. Alright, we're gonna have to Valakut. No, 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 we have Pedal. I just said that. You listen to yourself. Yeah, alright, so. Born Upon a Wind. You can play this pedal. Make it red. And remember, they're at 24. And print Beseech. 
Make some black. Make some more black. Cast another pact. Cast a wild cantor. Get him with the tendies. Well. <laughs> I'd say that was easy, but I mean it wasn't necessarily easy, right? We had some tough decisions. We had some really close situations. Um, but I think this was a clear display of how broken this deck can be. Now, there's a lot of things that can happen that shut this down, right? They're on the draw, they go Vexing Bobble, turn one, it's going to be brutal. Uh, we didn't have to play against Scaminator, getting scammed. We didn't get discarded. We were on the draw a fair amount, but it was against blue decks. Like, blue decks isn't really my worry for this deck. I think for the most part, you're favored, right? More often, you're going to have turn ones than they're going to have just, like, in-the-blind forces. So there's that. But then you also have a shit ton of protection. And then you know what you're up against post-board, and they have to mulligan a lot. It seems pretty good against blue. Again, for the most part. Now add, you know, grief reanimate to that. Maybe we have to move into main deck veils. I'm not sure. We'll see how things play out. But my bigger worry is losing the die roll against prison and having to play a game three on the draw, like we just did, but and it puts them on the spot. Like they really need certain cards. So some number of the time they're just gonna mulligan to oblivion like they did. And over time, they're probably going to learn more about what to actually play. Like, Chalice on 0, I really don't think is the play against this deck. Probably Chalice on 1, although sometimes you can play around that too. But it depends. Like, if they're on 7, it's probably going to stall you. And then they'll probably play a second lock piece and you'll just be behind. It's good that Boros is not, like, the deck. Because Archon of Cruelty obviously is an issue. Or something like Blood Moon, oftentimes we can play through. So, I don't know. It's nice that we made a really... Managed to get a really nice list going, like, before all this started. Because <laughs> I think we're going to crush a lot of people that are testing random shit. And once the metal... Metal? Once the meta levels back out, we'll see how we, uh, how we can adapt and actually fare in that atmosphere. But I'll have to go back and count the turn ones. I'll put it in the title, or I'm sure you'll see it in the title. We started off, I think, a little bit slow. That's another part of the deck, is knowing when you just have a super powerful hand that isn't a turn one, right? When your hand is just missing, like, any mana source and has multiple Pact of Negation, you keep, especially on the draw, you know? And it's, I don't know, to me, like, I've always said that Oops All Spells bores the crap out of me, and that's why I don't really play it. You basically just make four mana and then you win because that there's with this deck there's a ton of decisions that change your percentages, right? What card to keep when you're putting a card on the bottom when you're mulliganing? What which rituals to use for your necro to optimize your chances of not fizzling post necro? Then it also gets more interesting if you don't you can't hit for nineteen. I think we won off at like fifteen one game. Those might get really tight. Uh, the min-maxing of, like, you know, what you need to find post-necro and the sequencing, there's probably, I mean, at this point, I have, like, habits, and I'm going to have to play a lot more to even know if all the habits that I displayed here that seem like I have done this a lot because I have done this a lot, I'm not even 100% sure if all those are correct, like, heuristics to go by. You know, Valakid Awakening. That card is super interesting to cast. I I enjoy the scenarios that this deck brings up. It's going to be miserable for the opponent, but don't worry. It'll all be over soon. <laughs> I really liked having the faster stuff on the side. Previously, I think I had a fourth gemstone and, like, a chrome mox, but we were running two chrome mox, and then it was the third one. So I always had the idea of, like, putting some more efficient spells in the side for when we don't actually want additional protection and i think that's probably the most obvious example is game like post board when you're on the play against prison so i don't know i had a blast playing this that was a slaughter nice little trophy and uh i mean it had to be at least what we played 11 games 
I think at least seven of those were turn ones. And I think like four or so were protected. At least like three or four protected turn ones. We had a protected turn one on a mulligan to four. That was nice. Let me know what you think in the comments. Check out my links in the description below, of course. You can find my Twitch, my Patreon, podcast, all that good stuff. You can do a dono deck. Maybe you have a necro version that you want me to play on the channel. Let me know. We'll get after it. Until then, keep storming, y'all. See you next time.